Hi, my name is Sean Caulfield. I write Clojure for a living using the Atom Editor, the Chlorine plugin, and Cognitech's Rebel Data Visualization tool. In the last screencast, I talked more about CLI and DEPS. In this screencast, I'm going to show how I used the various tooling that I work with to figure out the solution to a bug that came in on one of the libraries I maintain. Uh, I'm the maintainer of quite a few libraries, in particular uh, some of the contrib libraries, Core Cache, Core Memoize, uh, Java JDBC, and Tools.CLI. And I got a bug report uh, from Core Memoize. Now, this has actually been closed, and I realized when I went through the process of figuring out the solution to it that I probably should have uh, done a screencast of it. I figured it would be um, interesting for people to see how I go about solving bugs. And what uh, Timu found was that if you have a function that you've memoized and it has multiple arities, uh, although it will work if you change the cache, which is one of the functions in core memoize, so that you essentially replace uh, the values that should come back from different argument combinations, it didn't seem to work for zero arity functions. So he shows this function here, foobar, uh, with zero arity it just returns 100, and with a single arity it increments that and returns that value. But as he went through, he found that when he uh, changed the cache with memo swap, although it worked for one argument, when he tried it with a zero argument, it was as if it hadn't been cached. It went back and reran the original. So that was pretty strange, and I figured, well, let's go figure out how this works. So what I've done is I've reset the repo back to the state it was in before I fixed the bug. Uh, so here's core memoize. We have uh, a depth EDN file. Core memoize is tested against closure 1.6 through uh, closure 1.9 and master at the time. I've since updated it to work with 1.10.1 and uh, the master is now 1.11. We have the Cognitech test runner uh, and we have a script called run tests. And run tests just says for each of those versions, run the test. So let's just see what happens when I run that. It'll take a little while, um, but it'll show you this is essentially just how simple it is to do multi-version testing with the CLI tools. So one of the things that I do when I get a bug report uh, is I always try and create a test for the bug itself. Uh, and it's got quite a lot of detail in the JIRA issue that was created. Timu provided me with an example of exactly how to reproduce the bug, which is always very helpful when you're an open source project maintainer. Uh, and so what I do is I use that information to create a test that fails because of the bug, but should succeed when the bug is fixed. And so we'll see it running through. We're on Closure 1.8 now. We've done 1.6, 1.7, And running these tests is just so exciting. Um, I've already got Atom up and running. I've got Core Memoize open uh, and set up for that. So what I'm going to do once this finishes running, which is going to be fairly soon, is I will actually run the CLI to start up uh, Rebel with a socket rebel, which is how I work with Atom. So here we go, finally running with the 1.10 master as it was then. And the only reason I'm running this full suite at the beginning is so that when we run it at the end with our new tests, we can see that it really does work on all of those. Okay, so I'm going to need the test alias because I want the tests included on my path. Uh, I'm going to ask for comp, which is complement, which will give me auto-completion in my editor. 
Uh, I am going to ask for a socket REPL, uh, which will start upon port 50505. Uh, if you're interested in how any of this works, you can go look at the previous screencast where I actually go through my dot .closure file and talk about the aliases and how they work and combine. Uh, and we're going to start REBEL on Closure 11. Okay, so there's our command line REPL, and here is our REBEL browser. So, sometimes as a sanity check, I ask it to tell me where it's running. So we can say get property user dire, and we'll see, yep, we're in Closure Core Memoize. Great. Okay, so I'm going to move this up onto the Atom screen, and then just reorganize this so it's about half and half. This is typically how I work. So we'll start up with the regression test file. Um, because cmemoize26 is a bug, uh, I'm going to put the test for it in the regression test. So let's uh, connect to the REPL, localhost 50505. And we'll see that I've already been running things in this REPL a little while ago. So we'll clear that out. Uh, I typically only have a few lines of the REPL showing and we don't need the tree showing. So let's load the file and then let's run all the tests in this just as a sanity check. It takes a little while because it's doing a race condition test on the TTL cache with this. Well, it's this millions of executions, but we finally get both tests run with no failures. Great, okay. So now let's go back to our bug report. And we're just simply going to copy all of this reproduction code in. Or we would if it let us. Let's try this again. Da -da -da. There we go. Okay. So we're just going to copy it straight into the file. Um, some of it's going to be illegal, but it doesn't really matter. And then we're going to go through each expression and just evaluate each expression. So we've evaluated foobar, and you'll notice over in rebel, we see uh, the var value and the var name. So we can see it being evaluated over there. Uh, I've talked before about how I have uh, atom and chlorine set up so that by default when I evaluate things they go into rebel. And we'll create our... Ah! The example as given doesn't have the require alias for memo. So let's put that in. So we're going to require closure core memo eyes as memo. Okay. So now, there we go, so that should work. Okay, and his test code did memo snapshot, and we're seeing in line the empty result, which matches his uh, rebel result, uh, REPL result. And if we run foobar, down in the bottom, we can see calculating and 100. And if we look in rebel, we'll see we got our result of 100. So that's good. Uh, we'll run it with an argument. And again, it prints calculating because it actually executed. And this time it increments its argument and returns it 201. And now he runs memo snapshot again, which says what the cache looks like. And we can see if you have empty arguments, you get 100. We can see it over here in Rebel much more clearly. And if we have an argument list that has 200 in it, we get back 201. Okay, so that's interesting. And here's the thing that he was trying. He memo swaps the cache and changes it so that the zero arg version should return something, 
and the single argy version, when called with 200, should return else. So we'll evaluate that, and as he showed in his REPL uh, transcript, he got a Java object back, pluggable memoization. Fine, OK, so we're getting the same thing. Now let's run foobar 200. And I'm going to clear the REPL panel below, uh, just to make it easier to see. So we evaluate this, and it immediately comes back with the value else, which is the new value that he put in the cache. OK, that's good. But now when we run foobar, we'll see, oh, it ran calculating and produced 100. So it's as if it hadn't been cached at all. And if we ask for a snapshot of the cache at this point, we see that the 200 version is still exactly what we put in, but the noargs version has gone back to the original computed value. So that's definitely not good. OK, well, let's go have a look at the source file. So source main, closure, closure, core, memoize. And we're looking at the function memo. And here it is. So here's memo. And what does it do? It builds a memoizer using the basic cache factory. Hmm, OK. So let's make sure that we've got this evaluated. Let's jump to the definition of build memoizer. And let's have a look at this code. So build memoizer creates a new version of the function. So that's what we're returning here. Uh, that can be invoked with any number of arguments. It takes the arguments and produces a cache key, ck, which is used here, to look up in the cache. It's like, hmm, so maybe we're not getting the value we expect here. Tell you what we'll do. We will add in a call to tap. Tap's a very useful debugging tool that's new in Clojure 1.10. Uh, so the values that we're interested in is what are the actual args, uh, what is the value of ck at this point, and what is the val we get back from the cache lookup. Now, I'm not going to save the file. I am simply going to evaluate the current top block. So that has evaluated this function. We see it appear in line. We see it appear in the Rebel browser as well. Um, while I'm here, notice it provides the value, the name, and the things that use it. So build memoizer, it knows, has been used by, uh, rather, the uses, things it uses. So it knows that build memoizer uses args function atom with meta and apply. And indeed, we can see that there's with meta, and there's apply, and there's args function. And because it hasn't executed this piece yet, it doesn't know about the things that are used inside, because this is a function that's returned. Uh, Rebel can tell you what is dynamically used. Uh, and if we look at the used by list, build memoizer, it already knows, because we've loaded the code, is used by all of these cache creation functions, so including memo, which is where we started with this. OK, so we've got the tap function in there. Um, Rebel will show us taps. We see that that's empty. So let us go back to our uh, regression test here. OK, so uh, we started with foobar. Uh, we defined a memoized version of it. We'll work our way through these, and if we look at tap, we'll see at this point, this is the value that's come in from this call. Um, I'm going to go through a few more before I actually browse those. So there's the foobar 200 call, the memo snapshot call, memo swap, foobar 200, which is correct, and foobar 100, which is not correct. OK, so let's look at what TAP has created. Uh, we see four calls. That's correct. We've done um, four calls into the memoized function. We're going to browse this. Creates a rebel 
taps entry that we can look at. So we'll navigate down into it. Uh, we'll see that args and CK, uh, C key are nil here. They're the sequence 200 there and nil there. And if we want to see what's in the val more easily, uh, we'll tell it to navigate into that. And now we can go through these and it'll pull out the val. And so we see we have a retrying delay for 100 and 201, which is how Core Memoize wraps things. After we've swapped in the cache, um, it's a different class, but it has the value else, which we expect. And we can see we've gone back to retrying delay 100 on that version, which is definitely not right. But the thing here that's interesting is if we go back and look at the Memoize code, we see it says when val. So it's not expecting val to be nil if we didn't find it. We should get back not found. So it is finding it. Um, and I must admit, this kind of surprised me that in a viradic function like this, where you have and args, uh, the actual args value is nil rather than the empty sequence. And so I thought, well, is that really the case? So let's jump down here and actually try this. And we're going to define a function args that just returns args. And I tell you, since we don't want this in the code, we'll put it inside a comment block. So here's our function, and we evaluate that. And now we're going to call foo on its own. And indeed, nil is the value we get back from that. And if we call it with 200 to simulate the foobar calls above, we get the sequence of 200. So that's probably what's causing us the problem because the cache is expecting an empty sequence and what we're getting is nil. So let's come back in here and when we get the CK, let's wrap that in an OR to produce an empty sequence instead. Evaluate the top level exp uh, expression. Again, I still haven't even saved the file yet jump back to the regression tests, and let's go through those again. We'll start with defining that. Yep, snapshot is empty. Calculating, we got 100. 200, yep. Memo snapshot, that looks good. We do the swap. We do the foobar 200, we get else, that's good. Ah, and now we get something, which is what we expect. Now remember that the tap expression is still in there, so let's go back and have a look at the tap. And we'll see here's our first four calls, here's our second four calls, and CK is now the empty sequence. Let's browse that again, drill in, and let's look at the val element of those things. Retrying delay 100, yep, 201. The modified cache with else, and we went back to retrying delay. That's the bad behavior. Now let's look at the new behavior. Retrying delay 100, retrying delay 201, the swapped cache with else, and the swapped cache with something. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so at this point, I think I can say, this is fixed. But let's go and turn this code into an actual test. So I'm going to get rid of the inline evaluations there. That was command I, command C in Atom. And we're going to turn this into a proper set of tests and helpers. Uh, we don't really need the print line calculating. That's just for the REPL to show that it really is executing and not just uh, producing values. So there's our test helper. Uh, I am going to add this to the require at the top here. So we're going to require core memoize as memo. And again, we've modified a form, so evaluate the form. We can now take this out. Uh, let's create a def test, test regression 
26. And we only need let to be a local, uh, foobar to be a local variable, so we'll do it that way. And we've renamed it to be test helper. Ah, we're not getting completion on that. Why not? Because we didn't evaluate it. We should always evaluate every form as we write it. So, test helper 26. Now we get code completion on the piece of code we've just created. Excellent. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that little bit of wrap, uh, output there. OK, so now we're going to convert each of these into uh, a piece of test. So we want to say is equals, and we're expecting to get uh, an empty map back there. We see it in the REPL, so let's remove that. And now we'll do the same with this. We expect to get 100 back for FUBAR. OK. And we expect to get 201 for FUBAR for this. And you might say, well, this is all very well. You know, we're creating these things. OK, let's evaluate what we've got so far, the top level form, and let's run just this one test. We see it runs. No failures so far. Great. OK. So now let's move back down to this. Um, we're going to say, OK, we want to check that this returns this expression from our REPL output. Uh, memo swap doesn't really produce anything very interesting, so we won't bother making that into a, an actual test. And then we want to make sure that this produces else per the REPL output and is equal to, and this should have produced something instead. So that's what we will put in the test. And then the snapshot at this point should produce not quite this expression, because this is the broken expression it produces, but instead we will put it in uh, Let's try that again. OK, and what we want in here is we want this to be something. OK, and we'll just remove this. This was just our sanity check. OK, so we can evaluate the whole file. Let's go back and evaluate this test. OK, so the test passes. As a sanity check, let's go back and undo the changes that we made here. OK, I'm going to go to tap. I'm going to clear that out. And we've loaded this. This is the original unchanged file. Now let's make sure that this test fails. OK, good. So we now have a test that fails with the original code. And we see that instead of getting something, we get 100. And instead of getting the cache showing something, we get the cache showing 100. Excellent. So we'll go back to this, and we'll put the OR back in. And we will evaluate the whole, evaluate the whole file here. I'm going to clear the REPL, go back to our tests, evaluate that, and let's just try this test. Excellent, it passes. OK, so at this point, I'm fairly confident we've got things working. We still have the tap output in there. We have verified that it produces the results we expect. So let's go ahead and remove that. And again, we modified a function. We will evaluate the top level form. We'll go back into the regression test. And this time, let's evaluate all the tests in there just to make sure that they all pass. I 
They are all going to pass. It's just going to take a little while. Let's go and look at the main test as well. Let's make sure we haven't broken anything here. So we'll evaluate the file and then we will run all of the tests in here. Excellent. So all of our tests pass. This looks pretty good. We now have a regression test for the bug we found. We've used Rebel to show us the results of various things as well as Tap to debug and be able to browse through that data. We've also used the new nav arrow function to allow us to essentially navigate through results as we scroll back and forth. Uh, so that has all been very valuable. And finally, now we've saved everything, let's go back to the terminal and we will quit Rebel and let us rerun our full test suite just to make sure that we haven't broken anything with earlier versions of Clojure. As we know, this is going to take several minutes to complete. But once we've seen it pass with Clojure 1.6, I'm going to feel pretty comfortable it's going to pass with everything. So there we are. Great. So we have more tests, we fixed a bug, and we're pretty much ready to push that up to GitHub and then go ahead and make a new release of our library. I'm going to stop recording at this point. Uh, as before, if you have questions, hit me up on social media, find me on Slack, find me on Zulip, and uh, hopefully we will be back with more Rebel-related screencasts soon. Thank you.